Hello everyone, this is Fawson. Today, I will share this kind of camera lens. Well, similar to the radar diffusion feeling. You can take a look at the rendering. Here is the front, and then a close up shot is added later. Okay, let me briefly explain the knowledge points used in it. One of them is made with XP particles. There is a one that spreads out along the middle. Contour. And there are some light spots. Such is the kind of brilliance with a bright center, with a dark ring around it. This effect is made. Let's first create a new project. And then we will analyze it step by step. First, we need a ring. OK. This one can't be dragged. OK, let's adjust it like this. Make a ring like this. Then we need to set the subdivision higher here. Select an example. System, change it to this ring shape here. Rotate it. OK, rotate it 90 degrees. Shrink it a little. Let it go down a little bit. Look at it from this perspective. Move back a bit and zoom in a little. The purpose of this is, is to cover the launch position, to cover the back of the hole, to avoid the beginning of the spline. OK, here we choose the grayscale spline and put it in. Here, select Follow Surface. Here, select the object. Put the ring in here. Play it to see. Turn this off first. Remember to check the type ring here. Only this ring will be launched. Change it to short here, and just emit one frame. About 300 examples. Then give it a little randomness of 100. Let's see. This is the default stage. Open this ring. OK, this is a basic. Large, scale. You can see, when the ring subdivision is not enough. It will produce this zigzag effect. So we need to increase the subdivision below. Now the zigzag effect is not so obvious. Go back to the spline, change to Bezier, and then change to natural. Let's see. OK, but this effect is enough. Next, follow the surface. Here we need to give it a little friction to make it stop at the end. OK, next, do some gradual disturbance at the end. Drag to the end. Lower the intensity a bit and lower the frequency. And the ratio is like this. We can change it to a flood. Let's take a look at the default situation. There are some disturbance effects. This is what we need to build. Add a strength here. Then there is a travel distance. Which is the length the particle has traveled. It can have no effect at the beginning. And then after a certain range, and generate intensity. Open 40 to see. 
The effect of this disturbance, it feels okay. Let's make it earlier. And adjust the curve. Okay, it can be a little more disruptive. Hmm. Now it's basically on the same plan arc. So, on its updated surface, we can add an offset to it. For example, if we give it a 12 offset, and a little random. Okay, now, the overall appearance, there is some disturbance, but at the beginning, we don't need this offset effect. They were still close together at first, then, there is a start of this offset distance. We also add a mapping here, and map the pay value here, to the distance it travels. I can change the parameters, about 10 to 30. This is obviously too small, I can adjust the value up. Okay, now, we can see that at the beginning, it was close to the wall of the ring. As he walked further, and the offset of the piece, the offset of the sound quality also becomes wider. It's not close to the surface anymore. This is the effect we need. We need to add a speed to it. So that when it arrives, so that it doesn't need to keep running. First, turn off the speed. After a certain distance, and stop for a longer time. Now it's basically moving all the time. We can judge its distance by the turbulence. This is one, not the offset value. It's 30 to 80. It can also start from around 30 and start to slow down. Okay, select the acceleration here and change it to negative 5 so that it will slow down gradually. Add a mapping as well. Then here, change the value of acceleration, which is the same as the parameter value here. Change it to the travel distance of 30. To 40. 50. Let's take a look. Look at your uncle. Okay, so far, we can see that it has started to slow down. And finally, the speed stops, but there is a problem, because the speed is too slow. The wavy feeling of his fluctuation is not very good. We can adjust it here in the carbon fly. The intensity of this curve, directly in the carbon fly. To pull it down a little bit. So that it will affect for a period of time, at the end when it's almost over, and then there is no such effect, so the end will not produce such a messy effect. Look! Okay, now there is no such effect. Then you can adjust it up a bit. Okay, make it bigger. In the middle, the area that affects it is larger. Here too. Okay, this feeling is almost the same. It has a sense of starting with neatness. And then becomes messy. And at the end, and the head doesn't look too messy. 
Okay, this is the shape we need. Okay, back here. I just did the most important part in the middle. Then, let's take a look at the rendering. The lighting is a standard type. You can see this. Here is the main light, and it comes down from directly above. There are some bright edges. That's enough. And then give it a feathery feeling. There is a um to multiplying. There is a feathered edge. Right here, after adding this light material. Look at this. This one only includes the middle spline area. You can take a look at this. If we connect it directly, it's actually a bright area in the middle. And then the middle and then to the side is black. And the middle is also black. The middle ring is bright. And this is also. This is also dark to highlight the middle area. Okay, but this makes it look too even. So, I reconnect it with the noise. The function of the noise is, is to make it visible that there are some bright areas and some dark areas. This part is bright and this part is dark in the same way, using the randomness of the black and white noise to multiply with its original range. Then we get some only middle brightness. But the range of brightness is relatively random. Look at it. This is a part that only excludes this spline. Let's take a look. If we don't exclude it, it will make the middle one, the inside of the eye, will also be very bright. After excluding it, we only keep the brighter, bright edges. To enrich the scene, the material is relatively simple, a little darker, and some plastic with roughness. The middle is a glass material. You can see a glass material. Clear the unused ones. And then, turn off the material of the bright strip in the middle. The glass cover is actually made of metal. You can see that. To reduce the intensity of reflection, and then we use the old material. The old version has this dark blue metal. Okay. Another point is that is relatively important is the part of these two light spots. You can take a look at them separately. Look for it. Ah, uh, here. And here, let's focus on it. Okay, you can see that. These two light spots are actually a plane. And when looking at it from the front, it's similar to the light on the edge of a planet. Okay. Here, a cylinder is used for cutting. After cutting, give it a subdivision. Here, the point to note is that the fewer segments of the subdivision the angle will be more rounded. Okay, you can see. Look at the material. The material is still the same as our lighting idea. First, we give it a black color of both ends. And then squeeze the points in the middle towards the center. This will give a brighter area in the middle. This area. Similarly, change the direction here. 
and change it from the v-axis to the x-axis and the h-axis. We also get a bright edge. OK, multiply the two, and then connect it to the luminous material and transparent alpha channel. Then we get this bright edge. Okay, the last point. Are some glowing dots here. Arcand. Select a sphere. Let's take a look at this. There is an object. Select object Malkan. Then drag the child here. First, is to clone some balls to the child and give them some offset. Turn off rendering first. You can see. Turn off the glass cover first. Click on these yellow areas. You can adjust the offset value here. Well, let's hide this. Otherwise, it's hard to see. By adjusting the random value here, to determine the force of cloning, where these light spots are placed. Then by adjusting the random value here, to make it not so regular, to achieve a scattered effect. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Then, here is a supplement. There is a little bit about the size of the hole in the middle. Normally, it may be adjusted by Scaling the bar to adjust it. Then here we can adjust it through its LR. Here, you can see that it is mapped to a shine image. To see the image. It is through the black and white mapping of the fisheye. Mapping. It is reversed. Here. It is mapped from 0 to 1. By default, it's 1.5. It's the normal kind. The feeling of glass. Okay. If we adjust its refractive index, we can see that when we zoom in, the hole in the middle will also increase accordingly. If it is reduced, the hole will also be correspondingly reduced. Of course, this is a relatively extreme case. So there will be some deviation in the lighting, and then make corresponding adjustments. The additional point is that, we can use the finish node, and then connect it. The edge part can be controlled to remain unchanged. You can see that the edge part has not undergone any changes. Here is still the same as before. Only the middle area, Can control the adjustment of the whole size? Okay, this is the supplementary part. Thanks for watching.